Welcome to what might just be the most anticipated new car this decade, the all-new Land Rover Defender. The old one was something of a British icon and an off-road institution. Land Rover really had a tough gig to build a successor. Get it wrong and you don't just mess up a car, you defile a national treasure. But they haven't backed down from the challenge. This Defender is uh, refreshed, updated for the 21st century, ready to fill the shoes of its uh, durable, capable off-road predecessor. But of course, it's not just one Defender, it's two Defenders. This uh, Defender 110 will be arriving first with the short wheelbase Defender 90 to follow later. Now, we do lots of these videos. We also do track tests, road tests, off-road tests. So if you want to see them, make sure to like this video, subscribe to us so you never miss another one. Now, when Land Rover says the Defender is new, it means new. Not a single body panel is shared with another model. All you have to do is look at it to instantly recognize it as a Defender. Ignore the badge on the front. You've got that upright silhouette, uh, you've got the ultra short overhangs on the front and rear, and you've got that signature rear hinge tailgate with the uh, rear mounted spare wheel. But what is underneath these might come as a surprise. The D7X chassis is an aluminium monocoque. Now Land Rover says it's the stiffest chassis they've ever built and is up to three times stiffer than a traditional body on frame design. The all independent chassis uses double wishbone front and integral link rear suspension, which Land Rover says provides the best combination of off-road performance and on-road handling. It can also be fitted with electronic air suspension, which is a first for the Defender badge. The 110's wheelbase is longer than a Discovery's, but raising the body and relocating some of the electronics has allowed for a much shorter front and rear overhang. Now, this gives the Defender excellent off-road capability as you expect because of approach, breakover and departure angles of 38, 28 and 40 degrees respectively, along with a ground clearance of 291 millimetres. It's also something of a water baby with 900 millimetres wading depth and a drive mode dedicated to the wet stuff. This boosts ride height, recirculates the air in the cabin, softens the throttle response automatically when it detects water and then shows the depth of any surrounding water on your infotainment screen. Oh, and of course, it'll tow three and a half tons. Off-road abilities come courtesy of permanent all-wheel drive, a twin-speed automatic gearbox and center differential, plus optional active locking diff. Now, the original Defender could lock its central differential manually, but this new one is configured through a touchscreen, with Land Rover's terrain response system able to detect surfaces and set up the car accordingly. Or if you're an experienced off-roader, you can customize throttle, gearbox, steering and traction control yourself. Land Rover's engineers have covered some million kilometers in testing this Defender with some 62,000 different tests they had to go through before they signed it off for production. So you might say they're, they're pretty confident in its off-road abilities. What about engines then? Well, at launch, you'll have a choice of four-cylinder Ingenium petrol and diesel engines, as well as a six-cylinder mild hybrid petrol with a plug-in hybrid to follow later. Just don't expect an electric version anytime soon. The D200 and D240 diesels are sequentially twin turbocharged, while the P300 petrol uses a single twin scroll turbocharger. The P400 mild hybrid uses a 48 volt supercharger and starter motor, as well as a lithium ion battery that can recuperate energy under braking. Now combined, that puts out a combined 400 horsepower and over 400 pounds feet of torque for a 0 to 60 time of 6.4 seconds. That makes it the fastest Defender going for now, at least until Land Rover's SVO department gets involved, which is almost certainly going to happen. All versions get an eight-speed ZF automatic gearbox, complete with that twin-speed low-range transmission for off-road driving. Now, inside, the Defender is just as rugged as you'd expect, with uh, visible fixings, grab handles for when the going gets rough for both driver and passenger, and a rubberized floor that you can brush clean. But don't go thinking that sturdy means simple. Behind this dashboard is possibly more technology than you'll find in any other Land Rover. Now, by putting this gear shifter in the dash rather than the center console, it frees up space for this optional third jump seat in the front, allowing for a five or six seat setup in the 90, or a five, six, or five plus two setup in the 110. Now, with the 110, if you fold the rear seats down, you've got a massive 2,300 liters of rear storage, so it's certainly practical. Land Rover's all new PIVI Pro infotainment system makes its first appearance here, with a brand new interface, Apple and Android phone mirroring, and much speedier response to your inputs. There's a color heads-up display as an option, designed with off-roading in mind, because it puts the information you need right in your eye line. The 3D surround camera gives 360 degree views while parking or off-roading, and clear sight rear view turns the rear view mirror into a digital screen that effectively makes the rear pillars and spare wheel invisible. Add in clear sight ground view, 
which lets you see through the bonnet using a front-facing camera, and there shouldn't be any off-road obstacle that you can't properly visualise while in your Defender. You can even keep an eye on fuel levels or remotely activate the air conditioning through a smartphone app now. This definitely isn't your granddad's Defender. Now, the old Defender was no stranger to customization, and this new one will be no different, except it will be Land Rover doing the customizing this time. They say it's the most customizable car they've ever built, with uh, four distinct option packs and a whole catalog of extras that you can add on to really make the car your own. If you want a Safari spec Defender, you can add a fabric folding roof, or maybe you want to turn your Defender into all-terrain accommodation, then you can add the uh, rooftop tent and uh, ladder to help you get up there. Maybe you'd like to conquer the urban jungle rather than the actual one, then you can swap these steel wheels for 22-inch alloys, and Land Rover will even treat you to some SPF, satin protective film that will keep the paint looking factory fresh. As for pricing, the Defender 110 will arrive at £45,000. Expect the Defender 90 to be somewhere in the region of 40 when it arrives, and then a commercial version to be something like 35,000 plus VAT when that arrives later. But of course, that will all vary depending on the level of customization that you add. As for how it drives, unfortunately, both you and I will have to wait a little bit longer to find that out. But if you make sure to subscribe to Autocar's YouTube channel and tick that notification bell, you won't miss our video when it arrives. Thank you.